guys welcome back to my channel try five guy today we're going to be working on the 35 chevy again so uh stick around and see what we're doing today okay so today's video we're going to just get the light away from the situation like that hang on so today's video we're going to install the ignition switch is going to be up here the wiper switch is going to be here and the um headlight switch is going to be here so ignition wiper headlight and then we're going to make some sort of a cover that covers this uh, we have to drill out the holes uh, to suit these things um, this one here's got a tang these ones have got flat sides so we're going to drill out the holes to the distance of the the diameter of the flat sides first so and then we're going to have to file around each one of these two holes here um, so the switch will go in and out each individual switch and this one here's got a tang so we have to file a tang into it so let's uh, get started with that all these switches are american auto wire um, and available uh, as a universal uh, kit or with a wiring kit correct steve yes i think it's the highway 22 kit or something very similar to that um anyway i'll Here's be back the wiper um switch from american auto wire um so they've got and you can see the flats on there but see you can see clearly there's a flat right here one on that side one on that side the diameter of these two flats and then i'm going to file around um, these two edges and they're going to it's going to sit like that in the dash over over here on this side so i'm going to start doing that and i think i think the plan is to replace this with a nicer looking um, chrome or, or aluminum um, switch knob knob so that's it let's start with that and the ignition switch is going to sit uh you usually put these with the teeth down right steve yes so is that what they're called teeth on a key yeah that's what i would call them um so it's going to sit like up into there on top of this one same thing it's got these two tangs that well, not tangs but two flat spots that sit um on these threads here that's underneath this nut so we're going to drill it out the diameter of those flats and then i'm going to file um the tops and the bottoms round so when you turn the key this won't spin around because that'll be the worst right you're trying to try and turn the key and the whole the switch moves so do that and the wiper like i said earlier has got a tang on the bottom of it but they still has to be drilled and then here we're going to make a some sort of a plate to cover that up so let's start all right so the first one we're going to do is for the wiper switch and we need to these are going to be flat here and this is going to be like opened up a little bit here on these tops so here it is here so it's going to fit in like that and we're going to have this uh, So this is going to be our guide, Steve, right here. Right, that I'm going to be straight up and down with that. You know what I mean? Mm. So there's not going to be much. I don't want to take much for that switch. No, but I'm just hoping that there's going to be enough, you know, flat. Do you know what I mean? To stop it from turning. Mm. I think the nut probably would take care of that one, honestly. Yeah. Do that now.
hopefully not gonna Like that. So I've got the uh, the light switch in. The uh, sorry. So I've got the wiper switch in. It's not done up tight, but it's sitting in the spot and it looks all right. That's going to be we're going to replace that, eh? I mean, it does look um, pretty chintzy, but um, that's how it sits in there. It's loose because obviously the uh, little grub screw they've got in there isn't isn't tight, but you know you can. Put that in there and oh, where is that grub screw on that side is it of course yeah it goes like that soft on off and uh let's just do it up so it doesn't That's it. I have to drill out this hole, um, and I think this is the right size, so it's going to be drilled out to that. So I'll carefully do that now. Of course, I can't get in there because this is in the way. But. bottom so the tang part that you press in and to get these off to get these light switches off the it's just a, a, a 60 style GM um, headlight switch um, you um, pull it all the way out like that right pull pull the uh, lever all the way out and you've got the tang which is uh, sorry a little uh, depressor uh, button here you push it all the way in right like so and then pushes out. Push it, push it all the way in and pushes out. So make sure that's all the way out. A lot of people have problems with getting these in and out. Um, if you go to um, American Auto Wise website, they actually talk about that. Um, and to put it back in, you just slide it all the way in and that's it. So push it all the way out, push it out, and that's it. Comes out like that easy now i'll just get it out of the way now just like i said pull it out push the uh the tang in like that and it pulls out move it out of the way and the wiring is going to go all the way to the top so we can get to the bot bot the button on the bottom and it clears everything so so that's where it's going to be and here's what holds all that together it's like a just a little uh a bolt here with a hole in it um, and that goes all the way through, pretty snug fit. I might have to just file that out a bit, just a little bit so I can, and then there's a, this little tang here, you can see it right, let's see if I can zoom in there, but there's a little tang on the top of that, there it is there. I'm going to make a slot up in here so it fits into there. It doesn't move, and it doesn't move. I'm just going to mark that at 12 o'clock position because that's where the wiring is going to go in from up the top. I'm just going to mark that like that. 
So basically all I did was I marked the tang, as you can see it, that is at 12 o'clock. I marked it on the sheet metal that I'm going to file. So I'll file that now. And I'll use a square, small square file, which I do have here. And it's approximately the same width as that tang. It's actually a little bit narrower. Do I have another one? I do. So I do, I've got a triangle one, which will probably work better. Yeah, it's a little bit wider. So I'm just going to put this in here. Keep working at that and I'll be back. So here's the uh, try to get this light away. I don't know what's got light on the take the light off the camera. Alright, the light, the actual light on the camera is kind of like putting a uh, dampener on the video, but let's have a look. Okay, so here's the, um, as I said, the wiper switch works good in the right position. It doesn't move around. It's great. I had to make this um, little tab there, locator tab there for the uh, for the light switch. As I mentioned earlier, here it is here. It's up the top there. There you go. You can just see it there sticking out from the top of the switch there. That locates into here. It stops this from turning around when you... Um, turn on the, your lights. I think that we should make or get a plate made around here as well something that's um, In this area to cover up this hole the whole lot though. There's plenty of threads on on both of those and also protect um, if you've got the key in there um, Hanging down and and whatever you got sort of like protect that as well So I think that'll be a, a good idea. So let me mount that in there and there's that that locator I'm going to dress that up nice and square, but it, it doesn't spin anymore, so um, we never did. But there you go. Hang on, I'll be back. So the thickness of that tang, that that tab tang or whatever you want to call it, sticks through this uh, uh, dash. It interferes with the uh, back of the nut, and it's loose. So I just put this oversized washer on it to stop that, just for now, until we work out what kind of we're going to do for a, a back plate. But we do have to definitely have some sort of a back plate to stop that tang. You don't want to file down the tang, um, or you can, but um, it really should stick through, right? You know, I mean, that's the idea of it. But that's nice and tight now with that washer because I've allowed it to sit over the over the tang. So whatever plate is made for that, it has to be oversized around that area so the nut pulls down on that uh, rather than hitting the, the little tang on top. So, uh, it's nice and tight, everything works good. Good. All right, next is the uh, ignition switch. All right, so got the ignition switch in too now. Come up pretty good, nice and tight. Not moving that. It's got a little tang in there. I, I found as well, like very similar to the uh, to the headlight switch here. Um, yeah, so that's pretty cool. Um, it's all in. Uh, Steve's making a plate that goes around here. Um, it's come up good. This is a plate I'm making. Um, it's my idea, my design. No, it's just had to actually, cut a slot in there for the tang. The, the actually, poon, the poon tang. Steve's making this. I'm not taking credit for it. You know, there's there's guys online that take credit for other people's stuff, and I, I'm not going to be that guy. You know. Anyway, so uh, like I said, he's making. He's going to oval that out and make it all look pretty. I think he's going to do a brush finish on it, and right up here, it's going to have a little tang for the for the um, headlight switch. 
and that'll I think that's going to look nice. It'll cover up that square hole that's about here. So he's doing that. I'm going to hand it back to him. He's off. There you go. He's really genuinely making that, which he's doing a good job. So why wouldn't he? Why wouldn't you, Steve? Anyway, see you later. Okay, so there's the dash. Um, light switch. Wiper switch. And key, all it, all it needs is a key. Oh, there you go, okay. Does it start? Hang on, what's going on? Why isn't it starting? Battery. Hmm. It's got nothing to do with the wiring. I don't think so. Yeah, but that looks good. And that's what I was saying about the plate earlier. It's it's got a bit of protection with you know mm -hmm. the key. But anyway, there's that. I think it looks good and you can do anything with that plate. But now we're just gonna find another one of these to put on this side. Because obviously that's not gonna stay there. I'm amazed they give you something like that, Steve. Like you think they'll give you something polished. It is kind of nickel and dime looking but it is, you know what I mean? But that but that's like it. It's, it's kind of a generic wiper kit, so. Yeah. But anyway, this looks nicer. Mm -hmm. That. Get W etched into that for wiper. Oh, lights, right? Lights. Yeah. An L. And get the same one with a W on it. I reckon that'll look good. And we all know ignition. But uh, anyway, off to the next thing. So both these wires come up through here. For left hand and right hand side. Where's the other one here? Here it is. So this is one side. Uh, this is the left hand side. This is the right hand side. They both get connected to this. So that's what we'll do next. Get all that done. And uh, yeah, that'll be all done for the back. Two days later. All right, so today we're doing a lot of wiring, uh, getting it all sorted out, neatened up, clean. All the taillight wiring is, uh, is hooked up and in the trunk. Um, it goes from one side to the other. There it is there, comes out of the taillight, runs along here, runs along there. While we're at it this morning, uh, we put the drive shaft in as well. So that looks cool. So that wiring runs through there, runs through, there's a hole behind, you can't really see it. Anyway, there's a hole in there with a rubber grommet. It runs all the way down here. It's gonna be fastened on the side there. Battery's gonna be located behind the passenger seat. Um, so the wiring gets to there. The black and red wire is the direct wire from the battery to the MSD box. Obviously, all that's the rear harness wire. Um, that's in there. And the wiring runs up here. That's the uh, inhibitor switch light for the uh, shifter as well. Um, that's all on. Actually, there's no light for the shifter because there's no provision for it. So take that back. Um, then it runs up. The center here, we're going to have some sort of a console in here, so the wire runs up in here. And start them, uh, the uh, wiper motor is wide in, like I said, the M MSD box is wide in. Now, <clears throat> I've done, uh, we wired up the steering columns, just a GM connector. That's just sitting loose, looks like crap at the moment, but we haven't got the gauges in yet. So that's all going to come up nicely up there. Uh, that's the horn relay sitting in that corner over there and the dimmer switch over here um, So all that's done and like I said once once uh, everything uh, It'll look neat. It's all neat up there all the headlights uh, All the headlight switch everything's connected into the connectors all that's in there uh, then the wiring comes through this grommet. Grommet's not sitting in place yet, but uh, this is all the, like, the horn, uh, the uh, alternator wires, uh, temperature sending, all that's all on this side, a fan switch, 
all that sort of stuff. That'll come. We're going to work out where that goes to the headlights uh, for the uh, turn signals, the horn and the fan. The other headlight will go this side. Uh, this over here is for the uh, brake light switch, which is underneath the floor. So that'll go on that side over there. And like I said, we'll we'll run all the wires for this side down this side over here somewhere. We haven't got that far yet, but um, it's sitting there. You know, this fan wire will run into here. Probably neaten it up on the side here. Um, so that's there. Oh yeah, that yellow, that big yellow wire, there's a yellow wire there. Uh, that is for the electric windows, so it'll have some sort of a switch there for the electric windows. Two switches, left and right. Yeah, so that's it. At the moment, I'll be back. We also got the other knob for the, uh, I think that was for the, yeah, for the light switch. Or the wipers, one of them we had to get. So now they're matching, looks good. Alright guys, bit of an update on the 35. Um, a ton of things done. Looks like we've done nothing, but we have done a lot. We've done a lot of wiring on it. Um, we mounted the shifter. Uh, we had to mount the uh, reverse light switch and the uh, inhibitor switch on there. All the wiring's been done. Uh, all to the back. Uh, well, it's all sitting out of the back. It's all wired in. Uh, the uh, under dash wiring's all done uh, for the headlights. Um, headlight switch. Um, wipers, ignition switch, that all works. The um, steering column wiring's all done. The uh, high beam light works. Uh, we still got to do the engine bay wiring, but headlight wiring's done. Um, hey, Steve, can you just turn it on? Maybe we just... Now, the, uh, these are all owner supplies. They're uh, park lights. Look at that. They're bright, man. All right, and then the, uh, I suppose, both... Uh, yeah, yeah, so they're the, uh, and then the headlights, Steve. Oh, yeah, bright, bright, yeah, and the high beams work too, I think. Oh, yeah, yep, they work. And then we've got, oh, they are bright, man, bright. So like I said, all the wiring's pretty much done. It's only got a few more things to go. Um, we've got the switch. I don't know if I mentioned that earlier. The switch is in. The switch for the, uh, what was the one? It was a headlight switch, wasn't it, Steve? Yeah, this was a headlight switch. But, but we got the wiper, right? We needed the wiper switch, the uh, chrome knob, I should say. Yeah. So they match now, which look good. That part's done. And I said, like I said, all this is wired in. Well, the wires aren't hooked up, but it all works. It all works. So shifter's in, in its spot. I'll just go around this other side here. And... Um, We'll show you the indicators on this. Yeah, just do one of them, Steve, the uh, passenger, I reckon. And the, uh, yeah, passenger indicator. I mean, both of them work, but yeah, so everything's done. All the wires are back here. These random wires here are um, uh, like the ascending unit. Like this is a trunk light, uh, ascending unit gauge, I think. Pink is that right? Yeah, Sending you to go. Like yeah, this this coil yeah this coil of uh, what's that? Reverse, Reverse lights and uh, this has got a license plate yeah. lights. Yeah, so it's pretty much done. Like just got to tidy up a few things, and uh, we still need a fuel tank. Fuel tank. We uh, still need glass for the windows. Glass hasn't got here yet. The what? Glass hasn't got here yet. So we need glass. Fuel tank um, and the gauge panel, which is getting it's sent away, though, Steve. Right? Yes. The gauge panel's been sent away to get made, so we can put the gauges in. But basically, <coughs> everything's pretty much um, ready to go for this thing. And then uh, I'm looking forward to having this this all finished. If you're gonna buy a wiring harness and it's 150, 200, 300 dollars more. Get an American auto wire because those easy wiring kits, you have to search for the stuff. It's not well explained. American auto wire. Chris at Ironhead Garage just done one on his 55 Chevy 
and he breezed through it, no problem. And I got it in, Steve's got it in for his car, I've got it in my 57. I would not use anything for any application in American Auto Wire. These are cheap. Yeah. No but schematic. No schematics, got to work it out yourself. I mean, the way it was, um, you know, told in the manual was yeah. crap. So you're metering constantly, trying to figure out how, it's, how, how something is ran and the, the explanation on the wires isn't the best. So sometimes you're, you've got a wires coming in and out of a switch. You don't know which one is hot, which one I'm going to, whatever. It's just, yep. it's just terrible. You, you, it's just way too much work. You'll spend more money. So if you're paying somebody to do it, you'll spend way more money with the cheap, with this kind of harness than you Don't buy it. Easy wire is, is the same as the other one too, right? What's Steve, yeah, what it's, 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 that? That same harness is sold under multiple brands, but it's basically like a 21 circuit universal harness is yep. what it's called. Don't buy it, is what I'm saying. Yeah, they, they're not made out of the best wire either. No. Um, MSD box is wired all in, ready to go. Okay, so we need the 1.0 or, I don't know, are we using 1.0? We're gonna use 1.0. 1.0 for the, for the battery, for the, uh, for the ground, windows, uh, right, uh, fuel tank. Yep. The grill shell is going to be sent away. I sent think. Sent away to get powder coated. Sent away to get uh, powder coated. I've already finished the uh, hood, which is over there. It's ready for primer. We've had some shit weather, so I haven't primed anything. The headlights are done. Uh, all repaired. All in primer. Ready to paint. But we need a couple of good days because we've got too many vehicles in here. So, other than that, it's um, ready for the seats to go in and uh, fuel. Fuel. We need fuel, but. We can run it off a uh, jug. a jug and get it started. So that's it, guys, uh, for this one for this week. Um, I know I didn't put a video on last week. I've been busy with other stuff on the house. Um, so please, guys, listen. If you don't want to subscribe, at least like it. Jeez, like the uh, video so I can get the uh, what is it, algorithms? Is that how you say it? Working. So um, that I really appreciate it. Don't curse us about the headlights. They're bright as hell. I, not my cup of tea. Here's something that a lot of oh, you yeah. folks probably don't know about is uh, when you run LED, particularly on both the front and rear, but even sometimes with the rear, if you got LED bulbs and the turn signals, you have to install a resistor to get them to blink. Uh, otherwise, it won't blink the flasher. So these just came off Amazon. like eight bucks for four of them work really well pleased with them actually the first thing we bought was uh led flashers which and i'll show them which did not work <laughs> so we got these and they're still sitting in there you know they they sell these things i don't know if you can see them here they are here they're led flashes and then actually uh right on it it says led flashes yeah hey, don't buy them don't watch it how much are they steve uh they were like uh 12 bucks or yeah 14 or don't buy them We've got the original ones that come with the thing. They work. Those things are eight bucks. You get four of them. You want them in line. You want to put them in. That's what you've got to use. Um, we just uh, rigged them up now to get these lights working. We were scratching our heads for a couple of hours trying to work it out. And then um, we connected, what was it, a, a bulb, right? No, yeah, a headlight. Put, was just it? put that tail light. We hooked that old tail light. Yeah, up. we hooked up this old um, tail light and instantly started blinking. And then we, we realized that was a problem. Uh, so if you ever have trouble with these 21 circuit uh, fuse box and you've got LED front and rear tail lights, or no, if you've got one side, you're fine. If you've got... Maybe, it's hard yeah. to say. But, uh, but for $8, you put these in line, these little fancy little yeah. heat shrink. <laughs> look, look yeah. they've got a heat shrink thing on them. But yeah. you, you just put them somewhere uh, you hidden. Be careful because they get hot. But... They do get hot. So put them somewhere where the air can flow to it, like yeah. in the fender and stuff. They're pretty waterproof though, right? They would yeah, be, yeah, yeah, there they are. Yeah, no yeah. So, I mean, we should have just done one video on the wiring, putting a, a wiring kit, because I've never seen people talk about them things. Yeah. Only, only online, but not a video of it. But anyway, guys, that's it for this week. The Chevy's close. Um, listen, I'm looking forward to finishing this up. But everything works, even the, the wipers work, right, Steve? Yep. Uh, all right, guys, that's it for this um video so yeah everything's done there you go see you on the next one